Greetings everyone, hey in this video we're going to talk about something that's very serious that has happened quite recently and these things really just point out based upon the fact that this world is seriously coming to an end and we're going to see the second coming of Jesus Christ pretty soon. Now this has some link towards the mark of the beast and for some of you I'm sure that most of you have probably heard of it but for some of you who hasn't heard of it it's in the book of Revelation chapter 13 and also Revelation chapter 14. And also what's portrayed today um, shows a lot of interpretations when it comes towards this subject of the mark of the beast. Some say it's a computer chip, some say it's a barcode, some say it represents Wall Street in the US. But according to the Bible, all of these things do not make sense upon what the interpretation could be. When you put all the information together when it comes towards Revelation and the mark of the beast, you see that the emphasis is mainly upon worshipping God or worshipping man. Now notice the characteristics of those who do not accept the mark of the beast. Notice what the Bible says about them. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So compared to all the interpretations on what the mark of the beast is, contrasted with those who do not have the mark of the beast, it doesn't seem to line up, does it? Now, I don't want to take too much time upon just explaining what the Mark of the Beast is because I've done a three-part series that shows what the Mark of the Beast is verse by verse, step by step in the Bible, and you can then see exactly how we build up to this conclusion. But I'm going to talk about the conclusion that I have right at this moment in time. And what I believe the Mark of the Beast to be is the enforcement of Sunday observance also known as the Sunday law now you may be thinking to yourself wait this sounds a bit crazy Sunday observance is the mark of the beast but please don't get me wrong upon what I'm trying to say the mark of the beast is not Sunday observance the mark of the beast is enforced Sunday observance so like I've said I've done a three-part series which explains everything to the very letter and also I'm going to show you how all these things play up towards being in the last days and I'll say this for the record we are not far from the end now in the past I've done a video like an introductionary video showing some clear points on what the mark of the beast is all about and we came to the conclusion that the mark of the beast isn't just a one-worded phrase. So it's not the mark of the beast. If we slow it down, we get a picture of what the Bible is trying to say. It's known as the mark of the beast. In other words, the beast has a mark. So for somebody who wants to know what the mark of the beast is, or what the mark of the beast is, what do you think they need to ask? Who is the beast and what is his mark? Make sense? Well, this is what the Bible says is a beast when it comes towards Bible prophecy. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it, in pieces. So a beast in Bible prophecy represents a, a, a king slash kingdom which you could say is under the premise of rulership. So what we're talking about here is world powers not chips not barcodes not um, um, streets like Wall Street in America it represents a kingdom. Next question how does a kingdom speak? Well this one should be obvious because a kingdom naturally speaks through its laws. Okay so what we've concluded at the moment is that a beast represents a kingdom. So let's try and change some of the words around. So instead of saying the mark of the beast we can say the mark of the kingdom. Next question, what does this mark mean in the Bible? Now there's two areas in the Bible that we're going to look at to see the definition of this mark. We're going to see where this word is used elsewhere in the Bible and we're also going to look at the original word to see what this mark symbolizes. So let's start with the definition. Mark, a stamp, an imprinted mark or of the mark stamped on the forehead or the right hand as the badge of the followers of the Antichrist or the mark branded upon horses or thin carved sculpture graven work. Okay, so let's see the same use of this word also elsewhere in the Bible. In the book of Acts chapter 17, Paul walks through this area called Mars Hill and here there was an image that was set for worship and there was an inscription on it which was called to the unknown God. Now Paul then explains this unknown God to the people as the God who made heaven and earth and the sea. Now notice, Paul uses the same word but look at the context in which he says it. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, 
We ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold, or silver, or stone, graven by art and man's device. Now, the word mark in the book of Revelation is the same Greek word as graven in Acts chapter 17. And the context that Paul is using with this word in the book of Acts chapter 17 is under the context of an identity. In this case, the graven inscription to the unknown God. Okay, so with this understanding, let's change some words around. So we can change the words, the mark of the beast to the identity of the kingdom. Now, based upon what the Bible says, if we just stop here, then you know it could conclude that this represents the RFID chip because the mark of the beast is on the right hand and also on the forehead. But remember, we have to gather a holistic view because those who don't have the mark of the beast are actually those who keep the commandments of God and also the faith of Jesus. Now, why is that important? You know, what does the Bible say about God's law? Well, we know that the law is spiritual. So for those who don't have the mark of the beast, they're under like a spiritual context. Now, is the RFID a spiritual thing? No. So can you have a spiritual thing combating a physical thing? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, which is a physical thing, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now in this context, we can see that you can't fight the devil with um, physical things. You have to fight him with spiritual things. So in the last days, is it a matter of something spiritual versus something physical? No. So just in that premise, we can't say that the RFID chip is actually the mark of the beast because it's a physical thing and it has nothing to do with anything spiritual. So what's the next question? Well, based upon the understanding that the mark of the beast can be changed to the identity of a kingdom, the next question would be, what is the identity of this kingdom? And I guess we're only gonna know the identity of this kingdom when we understand who this kingdom is. We can't say, for example, the answer is 100, when you haven't even got the equation to begin with. Now, again, for time's sake, I've already covered this subject, so if you look in the description below, you'll see the studies there which show which kingdom this represents. But for the sake of time, and also based upon what I studied, and not to cause any offense to anybody, but this kingdom that the Bible speaks of, if you follow along the lines of prophecy, represents the papal system. So let's change everything around now. So we have the mark of the beast changed to the identity of this kingdom changed to the identity of the papacy. So I guess the next question would be to ask, what is the identity of the papacy? Notice this quote, the man was dumbfounded and supposed there must be some mistake. So he wrote a letter to the then famous James Cardinal Gibbons of Baltimore and asked if the Catholic Church did indeed change the day of worship from Saturday to Sunday. The Cardinal replied, Of course, the Catholic Church claims that the change was her act, and the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical power and authority in religious matters. Notice also the following. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. Okay, so let's put everything that we just learned together. Okay, so we had the mark of the beast and we changed that over with the understanding to the identity of the kingdom. And from what we've understood, that kingdom is the papacy. So we can say the mark or rather the identity of the papacy and now we can see that this mark is Sunday observance, but it was a change from Sabbath to Sunday. And so therefore we can say this is the law of the papacy. Make sense? So now according to the quotes that we've just read and according to all the principles that we've just seen, does everything match up? In other words, does it conflict with God's law? Notice again, Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible, and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. Now, is the Sabbath day in the law of God? Well, yes it is. It's the fourth commandment in God's Ten Commandments. And according to that commandment, it's actually the seventh day of the week. But here, the Catholic Church is saying we changed it to Sunday, which is the first day of the week. And it's also interesting that this Sabbath commandment of the Ten Commandments 
This is the only commandment out of all the ten that shows God's true identity and his true authority. And the church comes in and says, you know what, this is our mark of authority and you know what, we're above God. So don't keep this day, keep our day instead. And so in order to receive authority, you have to take away or remove the other authority and therefore you are now in full authority. And we've seen this many times when it comes towards wars, battles, whenever a king would destroy another king, he then becomes the leading power of that time. So does it make sense that this fourth commandment, the Sabbath commandment of God's Ten Commandments, would be, you know, probably the one that's mainly attacked? I assume so, yeah. But now, here is the underlined question. How are these Sunday laws going to come about? And are we seeing certain signs of these Sunday laws happening today? The answer is yes. And we're going to see that in part two. Two. So as I said earlier, all the um, studies that refer to this, um, to a deeper sense of understanding this video is all seen in the description below. So you're not just hearing, you know, just new things. It's all concluded based upon um, a systematic study upon every single point that we see in this video right now. So please go back and watch those and it will make a lot more sense as we see the Bible unfold everything even today. So in part two, we're going to see some very, very startling things, things like the agitation of these Sunday laws. Also, we're going to see something interesting about the latest Pope, Pope Francis, and we're also going to know how not to get the mark of the beast. Okay, so make sure you watch those links in the description, and I shall see you in part two. So God bless. Bye for now.